Hello, I'm David Kerr and you're watching Shalom World News. Here's your latest news headlines from around the globe. South Africa's most senior Catholic cleric says the organisation Black Lives Matters has been hijacked by those seeking to dismantle the values, structures and institutions that underpin civilization and cultures. Cardinal Wilfred Fox Napier made his comments on Twitter over the weekend and also on Monday of this week. His criticisms are presumed to be in reference to Black Lives Matter's stated policy goals relating to marriage, the family and human sexuality, including the organisation's promotion of a transgender ideology. The 79-year-old Archbishop of Durban was a long-standing campaigner against apartheid. That was the system of institutionalised racial segregation that existed in South Africa until the early 1990s. He then worked alongside Nelson Mandela in peacefully transitioning the country to black majority rule. Cardinal Napier also challenged Black Lives Matter to oppose abortion. At present in the United States, a black child in the womb is five times more likely to be aborted than a non-black child. Hence, Cardinal Napier suggested that a crucial test of the authenticity of Black Lives Matter is, quote, its stance vis-a-vis -vis Planned Parenthood and the abortion industry. Pope Francis has welcomed a United Nations Security Council resolution calling for an immediate global ceasefire in order to help the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. The Holy Father made his comments during his weekly Angelus address on Sunday. He expressed the hope that the Security Council resolution, which was unanimously approved by its 15 members on July the 1st, will become a courageous first step towards a peaceful future. He also hoped that a ceasefire would provide the peace and security necessary to allow much-needed humanitarian assistance to reach conflict areas across the globe. The bishops of Kenya have spoken out against the proposal to liberalise abortion laws within the East African country. The plans are contained in the Reproductive Health Care Bill, which was introduced to the Kenyan Parliament last year. Now, the president of the country's Episcopal Conference, Bishop Philip Agnolo of Carecho, has written to all Catholic members of Kenya's Senate, claiming that the proposed legislation goes against the teachings of the Gospel, the country's constitution and the right to life of all Kenyans. He proposes that every Catholic in Kenya is called by their faith and their African background to protect human life. The life of the unborn is human life, says Bishop Agnolo in his letter, adding that, quote, its termination is homicide. The Kenyan constitution currently permits abortion when a woman's life or health is in danger and emergency treatment is necessary. Meanwhile, there were 6,666 abortions in Ireland during the first year of the practice being legal in the Celtic nation. That's according to new statistics published by the Irish government. The figures also show that only 24 of those abortions were performed on medical grounds, with 100 abortions due to possible fatal fetal abnormalities. The protection of human life from conception was previously enshrined in the Irish constitution, but that provision was removed in a 2018 referendum. The country's new expanded grounds for abortion were introduced on January the 1st, 2019. Since then, states the new figures, the abortion rate in Ireland has more than doubled in one year. The Pontifical Charity Aid to the Church in Need last year supported 5,230 projects in 139 countries and all with one goal, the end of Christian persecution around the globe. The figures are contained within the organisation's newly published annual report. The document also reveals that the charity raised $190 million last year from a total of 330,000 individual donors. That helped them to fund 23 national offices across the world. The biggest chunk of ACN's financial resources in 2019 were aimed at helping persecuted Christians in Africa and the Middle East. Meanwhile, the president of the Bishops' Conferences of the European Union has written to his counterpart in Nigeria to express solidarity and to call upon the EU to provide greater support to persecuted Christians in the West African country. Cardinal Jean-Claude Hollerich noted that many Christians in Nigeria live in a situation of continuous attacks by terrorists, insurgents and militias that in some cases reaches what he describes as levels of genuine criminal persecution. Cardinal Hollerich now wants the European Union to cooperate with the authorities in Nigeria to help put an end to such violence. Over the past five years, an estimated 6,000 Nigerian Christians have been killed, largely by two militant Islamist groups, Boko Haram and the Faluni herdsmen. Finally, thousands of men in more than 25 cities across Poland took part in rosary processions on the first Saturday of July. The first Saturday devotions 
also called the Act of Reparation to the Immaculate Heart of the Blessed Virgin, is a devotion which, according to Sister Lucia, who had been one of the young seers at Fatima in 1917, was requested by the Blessed Virgin Mary in a subsequent apparition at Ponte Vedra in Spain in 1925. The devotion has been approved by the Church. Well, that's all for now. Do join me next time for some more news from around the globe. Until then, may God bless you. Shalom.